This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. We have arrived in Sector 112 and request targeting data. Hello everyone, this is Captain Soban, and welcome to a game of Civilization V. Okay, so I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, um, why are we playing Civilization V? Civ Six has been out for a while, and Civ V is a really old game. Well, I don't own Civ Six. <laughs> And to tell you the truth, I kind of like Civilization V a little bit better. Um, I did play Civ VI for a bit at like a buddy's house a long time ago. But I don't know, there was just something about the game that I just really didn't like. And maybe it's because I was really into Civilization V at the time. But um, I think it might be something to do with the card system they added in. I, I, I don't know, I just wasn't a really big fan of that. Anyways, um, we're playing. We're going to be playing a game of Civ V. Um, we're going to be using all the expansions. I have them all. We have Brave New World. Um, not mods. Mods wasn't what I wanted. But we have Brave New World and the ones that previous ones before it. So we'll be able to play with a lot of different civilizations. I'm not going to do like I'm doing with Galactic Civilizations where I have a bunch of random um, teams in the game. Unless you guys want me to do that. I kind of just want to play the game the way it is on a massive map. Because that's normally how I like to roll with these. I kind of want to keep that to Civilization V because that game you can have, or not Civilization V, uh, Galactic Civilizations, because you can have a whole lot more players on that map than you can on Civ V. Plus the maps are way larger because this game was built on a 32-bit engine, which means that you're limited based off of memory, where Galactic Civilizations built on a 64-bit, which means you're limited based on how much memory you have in your actual computer. But anyways, that's that's enough talking about that stuff. Let's get into the game. We're going to do a single player. We're going to set up a Rome game. Um, I don't really know what leader I want to be. I'm going to kind of just keep it random. And then we'll play with whatever leader the game um, gives us. I'm going to play on 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 the uh, Peng... I forgot what this name word is. Pangaia? Pangaia? Pangaia map. That's where it's just one gigantic continent. I like to play continents, but... It kind of like throws off the game. I don't know. I don't want an Earth one. I uh, don't really want Fractal. What other maps do we have? An Amazon Plus. Hmm. Interesting. No, I think we're just going to play on one gigantic map. The only problem is this kind of eliminates the, the point of having like sea trade routes. Um, maybe we'll do continents. Continents is what I usually play on because you'll have like two massive continents but you really won't be engaging each other until much later in the game. Hmm. You could play on a giant map of the British Isles. That way you still have big land masses and then you have a lot of ocean between them. Hmm, but I kind of want to be randomized. I don't want it just to be the British Isles. Okay, here we go. Here's one that's large islands. So we'll still have a bunch of civilizations competing on the islands. And um, they will be able to uh, interact with each other. Of course, we're playing on the largest map size. Wouldn't happen any other way. Because the problem is, I'm trying to find a map that's large enough for you to grow, but isn't like where the land masses aren't small enough to where you can't really grow until you get to a certain age. You know what? I think we're just going to do Pangaina. We're just going to do this map. We're all just going to be on one gigantic continent. And then we can also still use the ocean, obviously, if we were on the outside. So, yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. We'll see how it goes. Um, we're going to play on the largest map size, which is huge. And we're going to have difficulty level of 5. That way it kind of throws a little bit of difficulty to us um, for this series. So it's not like super easy and doesn't get boring after a while. And then we're going to do epic on game pacing. So production, research, etc. all take a fair amount longer when played on standard speed. This game is balanced to take longer but still feel like a normal game. I don't like Marathon. Marathon takes way too long. I think it's like 10 times longer than a normal game. In a normal game, 
to get through every single thing i think takes like a hundred hours or something i don't know it's it's a long time because this game is very long but i like epic epic to me is like the perfect pace because i like slow paced games okay and then we'll go to advanced setup let's add a, a couple more civilizations um, we'll add four more and i'd like to have double the city states to make up for the uh um, amount of civilizations. We might actually take two of these off and have, or one of them off to make 15. Um, so, whoops. Delete. Put you down to 30. There we go. Keep everything the same. I am not going to have a time victory type. I always have this off because uh, I don't like to be limited based off of terms. But we will have a science, domination, cultural, and diplomatic victory. Um, so the AI can fight for those too. Uh, we were going to disable the start BIOS. This will completely randomize the map to make sure that you don't have a whole bunch of resources starting out. Makes the game a little bit more interesting. And then we'll have no ancient ruins because they kind of jumpstart the game a little bit too much. I don't really care too much for them. And we're going to randomize the personalities. This means like if we get Gonda, there's a ch um, there's a chance that he will be uh, warbound instead of peaceful. And then if we get, like, you know, um, uh, Genghis Khan, there's, there's a chance he'll be peaceful instead of war. It just it makes it to where, like, if you know the characters, um, you'll know how to fight them. And this just completely gets rid of that to make the game a little bit more difficult and a little bit more fun. But other than that, let's see. Start an ancient. Boop, boop, boop. Sea level medium. Rainfall normal. Everything looks good to me. Let's go ahead and get in the game and see what kind of character we are. Okay, so it looks like we're playing as the Arabian Empire. Um, so our special is uh, ships of the desert. So caravans gain 50% extended range. So our caravans can go further than normal. And our trade routes spread the home city's religion twice as effectively. So that means we're probably going to have to establish our own religion to take uh, advantage of that. And oil resources are doubled whenever we find them. Which we won't have to worry about that for quite some time. That's about mid to about mid game. We come with two special units. We have camel archers. Um, so this is our fast medieval range unit. So we won't be able to get this until we reach the mid middle ages. Or uh, medieval ages. Um, they're weak to pikemen because obviously they're archers, but they're specialized. And then we also get a bazaar, which provides one extra copy of each improved luxury resource near the city. Each source of oil and each oasis provides plus two gold. Trade routes, uh, other trade routes, other players make to a city with a bazaar would generate an extra gold for the city owner, and trade route owner gains an additional one gold for the trade route. So okay, these are pretty cool. I like it. So it looks like we're going to be a economy-based um, um, civilization, which means gold probably won't be too much of an issue for us. Okay, so we are now in the game. We have our little warrior that helps out with us. Um, we already found some silk, and it looks like some coca. This is a Shut up, I know how to play this game. <laughs> I have to remember when I get done with this episode to turn all those off. I forget to always turn those off. Uh, um, advisors off. So yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and make our base here. Um, you, let's go ahead and do a little bit of scouting. You go ahead and found our main city called Mecca, the capital of Arabog or Arabips. <laughs> Crap, <laughs> my history is horrible. Of the Arab people, Mecca is the capital. <laughs> okay. So normally when I play this, I like to start out with a monument so I can get um, our uh, culture going as quickly as possible. So I might go ahead and do that. Because it'll cost one maintenance. We're good on that. Got a good amount of happiness because the game just started. So let's go ahead and get that going. Choose our first research. I want to get pottery going so we can get faith going as quickly as possible to establish our own religion. Because we have to get faith up to a certain point to get a Parshan, I believe is what it's called. Or a Pantheon. And then once we get a Pantheon, we can start going for our main research. So, yeah. Um, let's see what else we have around here. We have some forest. We have some jungle. It's going to be kind of hard to expand. Um, but there is quite a bit of production around here. What do you, you require colander and colander. Calendar is not going to be happening for a bit. 
so I think this will be just fine. Bananas and deer. We're next to a jungle, so we might be able to find some bananas. But anyways, let's get pottery going, and let's make this thing go away, because it's going to be a while before that research is done. And we'll go ahead and start doing some exploring. See what we have around us. Got a little bit of marsh here. So that's kind of interesting. Ooh. Got some bananas. Okay, so it looks like we may have to rush to calendar because we have a lot of resources we can take advantage once we discover the calendar. I also need to figure out where's our first expansion going to be. Ooh, where are we? we're by the ocean. Okay, our our first expansion might be right here. That's one, two, three. Yeah, that should be far enough to make another um, place. Okay. That's good. Let's see what else is around here. So you go in this direction. Yeah, we got some stone and we got some bison. Oh yeah, I'm getting this area. This is going to be our first. So once we get this monument, I might go ahead and just start pushing that out. I need to do some exploring to see if there's any computers around this area, because they might rush this area too. So far it looks like this is the top of the map, so that's good. And lots of bananas. So this city, especially being right on the ocean, is going to be really, really big. There's our first round of barbarians. Okay. It's good to know. And that's a river that ends up there. Okay. Hmm. So we, this might be our next city if I make it that far. There, and then like here. Or here. Eh, I like a coastal region. Since we specialize in trade routes, it'd be nice to keep them on the ocean so that later on in the future when we get the ocean trade routes, we can get that going. So cool. So far I like to start. Mecca has grown! Yay! Cool. What do you produce? One, one, and two? Okay. And then I believe, yeah, there's a queue. So we can add to the queue. Once you get made, I want to establish that um, ocean base as quickly as possible. So we might go ahead and queue in another s or a settler. There we go. I'm going to try not to expand too quickly because we're going to run out of happiness if we ex expand too fast. But we'll get that and then we'll work on our shrines so we can get religion going. Use you to keep expanding or keep exploring around this coast and probably come back around. A patent found already. Wow, someone's going fast on the research. Someone's going really fast on all of the research or not research, but uh, thingy. Ooh, there's our first city-state. I'll probably use him and then pull it back around to our main base. Our main city. Yay! 
Yay, we have met Manila. Hooray, you met the city-state of Man Manila. Manila? Manila. Man it's probably not how you pronounce it, but that's the way my brain wants to keep saying it. Uh, so you're the first empire to be met, so they give us 30 gold. Hooray, they are a merry time. Cool. So they can give us the extra food if we keep them happy. So I have to keep that in mind if we have a... Uh, we want to grow our cities quickly. We can use that. We can use that city state for that. Okay. And I also kind of want to redo your management. Um, growing quickly really isn't a priority right now. I want you focus on production. That's going to keep you completely even though. Okay, so we'll have you like that and then once this expands we'll have that one um, be that. I think. We'll see. But my main, my main concern... Oh yeah, um, I guess I really don't need to do that. Because my main concern is um, getting this done. I mean, that's not really my main concern. But settlers use both food and um, uh, production in order to get done faster. I mean, I guess I guess I really don't have to rush this, even though I want to get it done quickly. Because the earlier we get this base established the uh, quicker we can get everything expanded. The bananas will give us some happiness. You, uh, calendar will give us happiness and, or not calendar, but uh, silk will give us happiness and cocoa will give us happiness. Oh, and the bison and the stone. Okay, yeah. We need to get this going quickly. Hopefully as quickly as we possibly can. But you, I guess we'll follow this river and see where it goes. I think that would be our next plan. So next turn. And you just keep following the river. See where it leads. Get two more turns until this is done. Ooh. We have found the Attilas! What's up, Mr. Attila, man? I agree. I agree with everything you just said. Welcome, stranger, to my domain. I am Attila the Hun. Be wary of crossing me at least your wealth up wealth end up here at my feet. You got it, boss. <laughs> Let's see if you have anything useful to trade. You really don't. Because uh, none of us have gotten any of that stuff yet. We don't have the technology. Alright, cool. We have found the Attilas. They're right here. So their base, their main area is probably down here. But anyways, guys, I'm thinking I'm going to end this here. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Please leave a like if you did. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until next time. This is Captain Silva on signing out. Attention fleet. Makan has found Valcora Gate. The coordinates are 11344890. We'll send everything we've got, but be advised, we are a mining vessel. It would be best if we did not have to move directly into the main battle.